Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the spot. And um, now it's time for our spot of music, and we're going to be checking out something from my South African brother. You know that uh, this that, kind of music that gets you. You know that uh, that thing that they do that. Yeah, yeah, the, I, yeah. When I try it in front of Nora, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, don't do it outside. <laughs> and it looks so easy, but it's oh so hard. Gosh. Uh huh. There you go. He's telling you. He's. I really like him. I like his music. I like his. You like the man. I like his vibe. Say you no, like the man. I really. I don't mm. mean. But okay. Even if I did, is it bad? It's not a bad thing. There you go. So um, yeah, nice video. I mean, I I'm think sorry. I'm like. <laughs> I'm so ready to dance right now. No. <laughs> oh yeah, stand up and dance. Cuckoo <laughs> just stand up and dance. That is the club spot. Oh my God, uh, the only thing is, from his music, you can tell mm -hmm. that he's very Hike. passionate and right. very, you know, I don't yeah. know how to explain it, but yeah, yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's and he's done really well for himself. He he is he's, he's he is he's doing really really well. Um, I want to say he was nominated for a Mama, but I don't think he won <coughs> this this year, 2016. Yeah, I don't think he won, but um, he's he's uh. He's doing good things. I like the video. What? Imagine if this video was shot like literally when one day when Casper's um, trainer came to train him. <laughs> Just shot this video. It's possible. Zina, this laughter that you're like, it's not even that funny. Yeah, maybe she's not, you know when you really? think of something, but you can't, you're not going to like that. You can't say what you thought of it. You just say something else. Mm, maybe that was what it was. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah that's anyway. Casper. He's definitely one of the best out of South Africa. And, yeah, most definitely. You know. But we have a best out of Nigeria. Out of yeah. Africa. Are you sure? I'm out of the, the world, in fact. If you, if you, if you, if you I'm the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Coming into the house. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. He's been here before. He has. We had a good time. A when couple he was times, here. yeah. yeah. Um, so please join us in welcoming the most incredible of the Short back boy, but the really big. Mr. Incredible MI into the building. What up, what up? I bring in presents today for I once. Hope, nah, in he's empty on <laughs> Oh, I didn't come with a present. Oh, my man. Oh, that <laughs> you never oh, come with presents. Yeah, What's up? I know. Oh, it's terrible. Everything I, I I thought of bringing, and I thought about it this morning. You, you didn't even bring mm. no alcohol. You can give us yeah, cash. Because the alcohol, I thought. <laughs> no, nothing. I thought you guys were going to have it. it on you can see no, right here. Oh, I'll scoot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. I thought it would be branded so you guys wouldn't. No, we drink anything. We collect yeah. cash. I, I will send. Can you imagine? Can I send? Yeah, of course you can. Cool, cool. You said can you I'll imagine, so don't even think about it in case he actually sends it. So you guys are just going to get rid of Ibuka like that? Huh? No, he's on daddy duties. He's babysitting, Cold. changing nappies. Ibu. Cold. What do you mean, Ibu? <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> like what? But sorry, my voice is gone, so. Mm, that's cool. Why? It's all good. Have you been drinking tea and honey? Who have you been screaming? Yeah, yeah, have you been I've drinking? Been trying to. That's why I can talk as much as I can. Screaming to crowds. I was at Fino Fest. Okay. Ooh, uh, I, heard I heard that was that. Damn. crazy. It was like 40,000 people. Yeah. yeah. Wait, did, wait, did you, did, was it true that you had to like basically like at some I point did, yeah. dive off the stage because yeah. it was getting too, um, too I, hype? Yeah, I think they, they took me off because yeah. it, was, it was getting there. But mm -hmm. I think that um, I could have stayed maybe a little longer. A little longer. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd weren't trying to hurt anyone. Yeah. Was, was the issue with the bouncer. Oh. One of the bouncers and some people in the crowd. Oh, so okay. that it sort of escalated to the side of the stage. stage. But they were just like, hey, just get out of here. Mm, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. How does gotcha. it make you feel when like, you see a Nigerian um, act like fill up um, a space like that with that many people? What does that say for when we go outside and you know, decide to fill up, I don't know, a stadium yeah. in London or something? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, which we have been doing yeah. a little bit. I mean, it's this year has been amazing for mm. for events, right? They, they filled up uh, Barclays. Was it yeah. a Barclays? Yeah. Barclays, yes. Yeah. Barclays, Barclays right? Center. Yeah. Barclays Center. Yeah. Um, and then Houston. Somewhere in Houston. And then in Houston, Toyota yeah. Center in Houston. And yeah. Like, Toyota Center is even bigger than Barclays. Barclays. Like, yeah. it's huge, super huge. Wow. And then Fino's doing this thing out here. Yeah. Um, across Africa, also, Casper. Casper. Yeah. Filled out, filled out the dome last year. And then this year, right. filled out the, I forget what it's called, the some stadium, though. Yeah. But he packed it out. Dope. But, um, Man, the power is gradually coming into the hands of the artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good, it's a good thing. Um, hopefully it continues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, uh, we had a tough year at the beginning with the economy, but mm -hmm. we're bouncing back. Mm -hmm. right. We'll talk more about bouncing back with that and much more when we come back after this short break with MI. Please stay with us.
Hey guys, what's up? You are still watching The Spot. We've been joined by our guest today, the magnificent M.I. Um, and today we're talking about music, the business, the passion, and the art. So he's definitely the, pers the perfect person to, to talk to about that because I kind of feel like you've gotten all three of those mm. in a sense, like the business aspect, Yes, I'm trying. Unlock. I'm learning. <laughs> Unlock. <laughs> I'm learning. You I'm have the passion and you know the art, right? Mm. Thank you. I, I know you won't say no, you don't, because you're not humble. <laughs> so we won't, we won't even pretend that you don't know <laughs> the art of music. Mm. But like, in all this now, you say the, with the business now, you're trying. Do you feel like coming from a more creative side, at least at first, because I know you did Loopy before mm. you, you became the head mm. of Chocolate City, but before you even started you know developing artists and you were just okay i'm trying to do my own thing i'm trying to push my own art do you feel like all of that is working for you now that you're doing the business do you feel like you you would have benefited more from learning more about the business before you went into the art like how do you feel about the whole thing it's a good question um um i always so i was the guy in joss mm -hmm. that was like i was the mini sponsor i had a job oh. i'll take like 5k get Jesse. I thought Jesse was the talent, Ruby, those guys. Right? Yeah. And I was like, I'll get in the studio and make music. And then I think one of the sessions, they weren't so serious. And I, I was like, oh, with the time I'll record a song. Mm -hmm. And then that sort of fell, fell in the right hands and mm. I got a record deal. Um, so I've always wanted to be the, the, the business guy. Okay. Right. And uh, as far as development, I mean, the first people I called in my development would be Je Jesse, Ice Prince, Ruby, those guys, because yeah. we, we started way back in Joss and we had a little studio and all that. So I was, I've always been the business guy, but nothing fully prepares you, especially what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like um, nothing, <laughs> nothing prepares you. <laughs> and uh, every day you think you've gained some experience. The next morning you wake up, you forget everything and start again. Oh, wow. Because every artist is so unique mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, they have their own journey. And, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you just have to stay listening, stay ready to learn and stay okay. malleable. Ah. Okay, stay malleable. That's mm. a good. That's a good one. Even in life, in general, I guess. Um, do you think that you're more, you're better at what you're doing now because you're an artist, or do you think it's a hint? Because like, you know the challenges of you know the days when you wake up and you're like, oh God, I have this show. I'm not even. Uh -huh. Oh God, I have to go and record and I don't have any inspiration. But now you're on the business side. It's like, okay, well there's money invested in this there's time like you can't be wasting yeah, my I'm time sure, like you I'm need sure. to go are you how does that work with yeah. how with your artists i think that being an artist makes you empathetic mm -hmm. to an artist process yeah mm -hmm. but i think that when things don't get done the artists re resent empathy ah so <laughs> it's it's weird it's a weird mix so if some artists didn't take off they would probably have uh, they probably resent me more mm. okay. in that position. Because you didn't push them. Not because I didn't push or them, but because as an artist, there are you know, you um, if you, you said you understand, like if I didn't know anything about the music business, yeah. I'd be like, hey, this is what I think has to happen, right? But when you're more empathetic and, and you understand more, you end up seeing that artists rebel more against someone that's in the music industry as, well. as mm. opposed to someone. So really? if I have a producer, yeah, if I have a producer friend or, or manager or... Mm -hmm sponsor or an, another artist there's going to be more of a rebellion when there's partying than if it's just some guy that ah. is a sponsor i think maybe because with the um with the artist or producer you're tugging back and forth on creatives whereas the executive is just the bottom line yeah guy. absolutely he's the money guy so what needs to get done has to get done mm -hmm. um but you're you're gonna go yeah, I, you're going to have a, a bit of a tussle yeah. mm -hmm. with... So I do absolutely nothing creative. No creative. That's what I was mm -hmm. going to ask. You're yeah. just the money guy. Well, I mean, to be CEO, right? Mm -hmm. So when I yeah. took the job, um, I think the, uh, the media, they don't really understand. Like, in other mm -hmm. businesses, they understand what a CEO does. Yeah. But in the music business, they expect me to be running around in videos and... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Chocolate City is a big company. Yep. It's a serious company. It yeah. has staff it has three offices in lagos it's yeah. like it's a, ser it's a huge company so to be ceo like means that with an artist i will get a call that says we're done deciding on the video should we pay for it and i'll just say yes mm. right so yeah. the the things that i'll, I'll be more hands-on will be structural things yeah. um, um deciding the direction the 
corporate culture, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. um, but as far as the creatives, it, it will take too much time in the process to, for me to be part of that. Mm. Yeah. Now, if I have a friendship with the artist, yeah. then that's different because then we can hang out and talk yeah. about music and stuff like that. I thought your artist, I'll definitely find a way to be asking one yeah. or two questions, regardless of whether you're, <laughs> you know, far. I'll still find a way to play a song and say, mm -hmm. yo, M, what do you think? What do you think? Because you've been someone that has gone through all the different mm -hmm. stages yeah. at all the different times. You know, the funniest thing? Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> I don't know if I, we should be, I should be pushing the conversation in this direction, but that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. You find, especially that, um, and I don't know if this happens in other industries too, but when you're successful, let's say you're, you're giving, a, you're mentoring someone, right? They will take everyone else's advice. But yours? Like as an actor. Right? Really? I don't know what like, it is. I wow. I'll be in the room and I'll be like, I don't think this song is going to work. They'll be like, well, my friends, all my friends told me. I'm like, uh, <laughs> like I'm the guy that knows. <laughs> I'm the only person that has any experience yeah. about that. But um, the good thing, I think that God, if you, I mean, whatever people believe out there, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm a Christian, so God puts that in artists because the CEOs need to be wrong a lot oh. of times. Yeah. And when you, somebody's obstinate about something, when somebody says, no, 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 I don't agree with you guys. I've seen all the data, but uh -huh. I don't agree. Um, most of the times, they're right. Mm -hmm. And you have to know when to say, okay, let's go with what they... Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. That's interesting. interesting because I, 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 didn't, I mean, you know, talent. How important would you say talent is in the whole mix of everything? Because we see a lot of talented people, right? Mm -hmm. And... You know, it's almost like, what's really going on? You know, there's some people that, I feel, funny enough, when we talk about MI in general in my conversations, I always say, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you, the way you entered the industry, it was almost like it was calculated. Like, it wasn't, you said now that old oh, music, but was that your first song that we heard in Lagos? Uh, um, safe. Safe. It was almost like okay. this guy said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I say the same mm -hmm. thing about Banky too. It's almost like as if he said, this is what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to penetrate, and it worked, you know? So... At that point in time, it wasn't, it wasn't only about your talent, it was also about your strategy. Right. So what would you, how, how big of a role would you say talent in itself plays when there, it comes to blowing? I feel like there are about two questions in there. Yeah. yeah. But we're going to go on a quick break. That's yeah. right. I like how you, so, we're here. When we, when we come back, we'll be answering those questions. We'll see you guys in just a moment on yeah. this spot. Welcome back to the spot. We still have MI in the building. M I. Okay, there goes the um the hype man. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I do hype too in case. Like. So you were asking MI a question about talent and strategy. Strategy, yes, talent and strategy. Mm -hmm. Um man, so I don't know how to answer. When you have superior talent, it's gonna take you very close to getting an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But if somebody just works hard, um have you guys read the book The Outlier? Yes. No. Right? Yes, I have. The outlier by Malcolm, Malcolm, yeah, Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell. So basically what he says is that um, the best talent is because the person has put in so many hours of repetition and working hard. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that if, if you're a virtuous, virtuoso pianist, right? Three years old, four years old, you can see the piano, you can figure it out. If I put in 10,000 hours, no matter how talented you are at three years old, by 10 years old, I'll be better than you. Mm. Yeah. Right? So the people that put in the most work, and I think between Jesse and I, mm -hmm. Jesse's supremely talented. And because he's been supremely talented and I'm not, mm -hmm. I have had to work hard. hard. I'm in the studio c constantly. I record, for my last album, Chairman, I had 17 songs. I recorded 150 ideas. Jeez, wow. Louise, ideas, man. Right? Just back, I keep, keep trying and keep trying. And uh, so if someone wants to work hard, they're gonna beat. Every talented talent. person, hands down, no matter how talented they are to start with. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to ask about ni the Nigerian music industry because sometimes it seems, from talking to people who are in the industry, whether they're the, act the artists themselves or like a producer water. or a writer, yes, water, yeah. please, thank you. Um, it's, it's almost like we have a semi-unique industry, the way mm. it's built. It's going the right way now. You know, you have proper structures, but it's not always been that way. Um, the, where passion, it's not as if we lack passion. We've had great music over the years from the uh, Michael Cruz and Alex Zitos to the 90s guys, the Tribesmen, mm. Maintain, mm. all those guys, Remedies, mm. all those guys. Great yeah. guy. LD. But then there was almost like there was a cap, right? 
they had the passion and they had the art together, but they didn't have the structure that could like make it work for them. So years and years after, they don't have royalties of their, from their music, things like that. Uh. Do you think that's what we're... How do you think this is all fitting into our industry today? Like, how, mm -hmm. where are we going? Like, are we melding the three together to make sure that the artists have a future? Or are we yeah. still kind of like, eh, we're not sure. Yeah, it's even bigger than artists. It's the guy that's in the room that came up with the hook. Right, right? it's the songwriters, for, right? The songwriter, and all those people, the yeah. producer. So if, even if I try to explain, like, the splits in a... So I'm, I, I run a label. Let me just brief demonstration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I run a label. Um, if, if um, say Zainab released a single, right? Automatically she'd have a percentage of the song if she wrote the song. Mm -hmm. If you produce the song, you have a percentage of the song. If she performed the song, so let's say she wrote the song, you produced the song, you performed the song, mm -hmm. you have a, percentage have a percentage of the song. Okay. I have to pay your publisher, your publisher, your ah. publisher. There are certain ways the song could be used that I wouldn't get paid, but you guys would get paid. Gotcha. But if someone wanted to use the copy of the song that I made, they'd have to use it. I'd have a contract with you. So it's, so it's like yeah, it's, infinitely there's a lot of streams. Yeah, complicated, yeah. And, um, and we're getting there, but there isn't enough structure. Mm. So I hate it when I go online and I see people like, oh, Whiskey should have done this, or why didn't he? Because they don't get it's it. just young people. Like, we're all young people just trying to figure it out. Yeah. And there's been no structure. There's been really no help from the government. Mm -hmm. Really no, like, the whole uh, grant thing that they said. Mm -hmm. like, we, we didn't see it. It's just a story. <laughs> it's it weak. Like, Were you inside? <laughs> we like, affected it's like right. the American yeah, election. We true. watched it. We just, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. watch. How do you guys feel about that, Leslie? Uh, we oh, we missed that, so that, that, <laughs> that topic. You know, but um, it's interesting. It's actually yeah. interesting. The, the, what about the songwriter in Nigeria? There's, yeah. there's really no place for, there's no, we don't hear, it's, it's almost like as if it's... We don't know who they are yeah, because... It's not why, an well, industry. They, yeah. might, be, why is they it might be tied into agreements yeah. that doesn't yeah. allow them. Is that what it is? That's what I actually well, well, Why is that? Register with Kosan, first of all. Yeah. Register with Kosan. That, they protect the rights of songwriters. Yeah. And uh, if you register with Kosan, you're going to get your money, whether the label knows or not. Or not, right? okay. Um, and then uh, every artist just do some research about, you know, when you're in the studio, your split sheets, mm -hmm. make sure you, you, you sign for the music that you own. But even if you don't, you still own it as long as you don't assign the rights to someone to else. To somebody else. Yeah. So actually just curious about something. I remember asking, I don't remember who it was that was a guest that was on the show. And we, I think we asked them something about who wrote that. And they were like, I can't say. And I was just wondering, why is that? Because everywhere else, like... Um, you have a Whitney Houston song that, um, oh, what's her name? Was it a Neo rapper? has written no, it wasn't. so many no, songs. No, it wasn't, it wasn't. Pardon? <laughs> I said Neo has written so many songs for artists. No, but not, artists like, but not even, even your Whitney's will have, um, will have names, of, names of writers yeah, or will um, have so. their name assigned to rights of writing if that makes sense, mm. right? Well, so yeah, I mean, so even, if, a little if, bit. even if we're sitting in this room mm -hmm. and you wrote like three verses and mm -hmm. all I did was contribute one line to the that's chorus. That's okay, that's fine. I'm getting, I'm getting something. Yeah, so I'm just wondering why it's why almost is it like wrong in a sense. Like nobody like ever admits, your street cred. No, I'm saying for them, they feel yeah. in a sense that it's wrong to say, oh, I didn't write this song. Mm. Um, you know, I, I know, for example, Omami writes a lot of her music, or if not all. But that's not everyone. But the impression that a lot of artists want to give is that they write all because their music. Because the impression and, to, from but I don't the audience know as well sometimes curious. is that they feel like you, you're not highly skilled if you can't write, produce, create. Like mm. if you're not in the entire food chain of, mm. of, of the art that you create, mm. people mm. think that you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. So for me, for example, when I see like a female singer or yeah, okay, yeah, my thing is with female singers. <laughs> if you can't perform live on stage, I don't understand what you do. Mm. And so you're that's being me. sexist against women? No, no, no. Men, uh, men as well. <gasps> men as well. But I, it's a really big thing for me for women. Yeah. Because I don't understand why you would get on stage and you're playing me your CD and you can't hold a tune, whereas I know you can sing, but you mm. refuse to sing live to me on stage. Mm. What did I pay for? Mm. I didn't mm -hmm. pay for your CD. Mm. I've, I've got that already in my car. Mm. I think also sometimes an artist will start out with a myth about them. So ah. one of the funniest things is that I've met this kid... Um, his name is, ah, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to forget his name. Um, I remember it okay. in the story. He's the most amazing writer. And because I'm so busy, 
I'm like, man, I wish this guy could write raps for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's no way with the lore about MI and yeah. where my career okay. that I could do songs. Okay. And there's no way I could then say, hey, I didn't, he write, didn't write. Like, there's, no, there's no win. So I'm literally there with this guy that could Possibly. Could make your work possibly possibly make your yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be easier for me to come back and just like an essay and say, hey, yeah. <coughs> change, change this. that, change this. And mm -hmm. I think that's what Drake did. So yeah. I don't have the time to write all these lyrics. <laughs> write some songs. I come and listen to them. Okay, I don't like this. Change mm. this line. Yeah. But uh, you can see what happened, right? <laughs> so, yes, you can. Um, yeah. A lot of times people are down that road and they can't tell yeah. you, hey, somebody wrote this for me. Yeah. I think it's different from a rap, for a rapper and a musician. Yeah, rappers, you know, you, there's rapper that Rapper is like a no-no, uh, like, what? You don't yeah. write your rap. If you yeah. don't, you are in way. You so personal, right? Mm. Oh, imagine that M.I. didn't say, they call me M.I. Yeah. It was somebody else. Yeah. I heard, I <laughs> heard that, but yeah, we have to front. go. I heard that someone else, you know, wrote that, but we'll have to go on a break. <laughs> oh, wow. And we'll get you back to that. You want to start trouble? Yeah, we Welcome back to The Spot, and we're still here talking about the music business, um, the art, <laughs> the, <laughs> the business, the passion, the and business, the art. The business, the passion, <laughs> and the art. Hmm. What do you think one-hit wonders lack sometimes? Like one-hit wonder? When, you're, when <laughs> you've made one hit, right? One and then you just, you just keep plugging just away. Or you've been plugging away, and then you have the one hit. Do you think... Is that a luck thing or is that a something's missing and then somehow time no. and chance just sha joined for you? I think celebrity culture is so dangerous to music Ooh. because because a one hit wonder says this person seemed this way, mm -hmm. whatever they do for the rest of their career, if it doesn't seem the same way, it's the rest of their career is irrelevant. So you could make great music, mm. but if you just never had that celebrity status hit mm. song. Okay. So, um, like, I, I keep telling people, I signed up to be a musician, mm -hmm. not a celebrity, mm -hmm. right? So, I've been able to gradually mellow it out because I could see that it was dangerous for me, right? But um, things like that, like, people would come up to me. So, before my third album, it took four years between yeah. the second and third. Before the third one, people would come up to me and be like, am I what's wrong? <laughs> and I was the happiest then because I, I was able to spend time with my family. I was making more, more money than I'd made mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. I was setting up business that I wanted to do and stuff like that. And people would legit come up to me like all the time and be like, hey, what's wrong? Just talk to me. Like, mm. I'm like, I'm, okay. I, I'm balanced I'm now. Great, bro. Yeah. <laughs> when, you know, when you're, when it just gives you insati the, the, the consumership has an insatiable appetite mm. that is impossible to keep up with. Yeah. You, no matter if you did everything right, you couldn't be a star forever, hmm. right? And, yeah. and, and you could also coming, have a song that's bigger than you. Coming to terms with that, right? It's so tough. even a one-hit wonder, there's people that we say are one-hit wonders that have had amazing careers after that. Right. They're taking care of their families, you know, working hard. Mm -hmm. um, but it, at the end of the day, I think when you, when you have had two, three, four, five hits, you look back and just, it's luck. Hmm. It's something in the cosmos that happens for you that you can't recreate as hard as you try. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's so tough, because like, when you have a hit back to back and then you can't actually sit and put an album together or an EP, like, it, for me, I just wonder, what do you then have to offer? Is, is, is that it? Is it just to, to, to create that one-off tune that you know, does really well over Christmas or does well mm. for a few months? Oh, okay, you mean people um, but who, then you, who you, intentionally you say, okay, I want one hit, I mean, I'm trying to... No, yeah. who have one hit wonders, but then they can't, they can't create more outside of that. Yeah, so you, you can't, can't even more, put, you, you can't even put together... <laughs> like, or drug in, maybe a music... So you're lazy. So, so, you, so you basically have an album of like one hits rather than a cohesive you like can't body control of that. work. Oh, okay. You can't control that. African rapper number one, one of my biggest songs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm in the studio, messing around. Mm. High life music. I was saying to myself, what if we made a high life rap song? Ice Prince walks in, sings, African rapper number one. I, we bust out wow. laughing. And we're like, this would never work. And put it away, right? I'm recording the whole of MI2. I'm almost done. Flavor comes to hang out with me one day. Mm. I'm like, oh, let's do something for my album. He listens to like 20 things. Here's that one thing and that, that I'm embarrassed one. to play for him. Because I'm like, how do I have songs? How does someone sing a chorus yeah. with my name? How mm -hmm. does Flavor say, am I, microphone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and then he says, oh, this song. 
and then trying to rap on it took like maybe another two months. Mm -hmm. And I, the Alaba guys walked in, heard it, and just said, album sold. I didn't have verses on it. They heard African rap on number wow. one with the chorus and the beat, and they said, album sold. Nothing, like all this other work I'd done. Yeah, right? didn't matter. Didn't matter like, to them. It didn't matter that was the one. In the creation of this one song, it just mm. fell in our laps, mm. right? Or Ole Ku or yeah. Waiting Day, like mm. the songs I've been a part of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kokar, when he came, uh, in fact, Kole Work was in the studio, and, and it's almost as if we hadn't heard it. We'd heard it, but we hadn't heard it. Yeah. And then one day we just heard it again. And, we're like, and you're oh, like, oh, wait, that's the one. Work. And then it just, you know. You never know, and you have to be okay with, Not know with what you have. just just being just being a hardworking artist. Because if it doesn't work, and you you have some uh, some um, expectation that you're trying to live up to, it mm -hmm. could affect your self esteem and drag mm. you down. So during the break, we were talking about like personality traits. Mm -hmm. So for um, Chocolate City, uh, where you guys um, there's an eye for detail with every aspect to building a brand and an artist. Is that something that you work on, um, personality-wise, with your different um, with your different acts? Because I thought about rappers and the stereotypical mm -hmm. behaviors and, and and the ways that they just do things, and it reminded me of my so my cousin is um, so she's a, a, a journalist with CNN, and she was doing an interview Name with. Rapper. <laughs> my cousin is a journalist. No, no. Uh, so she um, was doing an interview with an artist in SA and she had told him that okay I'm gonna ask you these three questions um, you can just look at me whatever and she asked the last question finish then she was like oh thank you very much he walked away and she said that nobody has ever done, done that, that. Mm -hmm. to her in her years of interviewing presidents mm -hmm. the most important mm -hmm. people you can mm -hmm. think of she didn't understand how he felt that, that was, was okay. Yeah. Um, and I was like, look, sometimes like that's just that's just what you're gonna get. You're gonna get mm. one who doesn't want to talk. You're gonna get one who just makes you feel like crap. You're gonna get a little Wayne in the yeah. interview saying to you, oh, "Don't be asking me those stupid ass questions." Mm. Or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I just, why are they? I don't want to say you guys because you're not like that. Hopefully, hopefully you guys want to talk about me next episode. Well, <laughs> we did have one. Like, I need to watch the next four episodes just to be sure. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, two episodes ago, yeah. MI was terrible. You're, no, you've been a good guest. I mean, this yeah, is your you third. Been. This is your third. This is the third time back. you've been here, and we've had a good time each time you've you've been here. So you're not one of the people on our blacklist. Yeah. 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 I, when I go, when I started this season, I found out that there was a blacklist. <laughs> so yeah. so, but to answer the question, yeah. I, I just think fame is helium. You know, it's. Mm. Goes to Getting that ego, it just blows it up and blows it up. However, um, what I would be concerned about as a C record mm -hmm. company guy, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. exactly. is, oh God, talk. is you having healthy relationships and having a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because if you're arrogant and you're rude to people, it could help you make right. money as long as you're not arrogant to the, the, to the people, people that who have the money. Yeah, <laughs> or what, to the right people. Right? Yeah. So if you want to piss off the whole of media and media hates you, right? And it's, it's put Kanye in a position of power where he's like, look, I hate the paparazzi. Mm -hmm. I hate, like, he, he storms off of interviews mm -hmm. goes against the establishment, like the Academy, I mean, the Grammys and stuff yeah. like that. It, it could put you in position, but where we're all worried now, right, about mm. Kanye because he mm -hmm. seems to be yeah. seems Going to be escalating. Off the hinges, yeah. So yeah. if he goes back home and you know plays with his kids and he's happy with his wife, and then shows up, so like Kendrick Lamar, he's like completely opposite. Yeah, like yeah, com you know what I mean. Like Together. he's chill. Yeah. Very well said from Baba himself, M. I. Abaga. And on that note, we shall be going on a quick break. Remember to contribute on social media: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook my WhatsApp, whatever it is that you choose. The spot will be right back. What's up, guys? You're still watching The Spot here on Ebony Life, and we are still hanging out with MI. We've been talking music, the passion, the business, and the art. And we're going to kick straight over to a spotlight to see who is in the spotlight. 
Catch you never marry. You're fighting, you set chat, them say you carry. You still they fine for your tatties. No worry, God go do them. Call out you, they drink you, they spend. Two years don't pass, and you never parents. Your guy, your bossy, they use you, they play. My brother, this life now, nah, you want it. This life now, nah, JJ, drink them twice. Nobody only pass you. And my name is Shodi Arukayat, so my stage name is Shodi Rex. I'm a pop artist, R&B and pop actually. I do music. It started um, a very long while, I can't say when I was very young. I, I know I do sing then, I sing and I dance. But I took more of dance to heart, so I dance like every time. Back then, in secondary school, I go for competitions, even when I was in university. So actually that time, I joined um, an a cappella group called um, Call to Seb. We sing in churches and all. So that was how I actually started. I wanted to go into music, but I, I thought about that thing that, uh, if I go into music now, will my dad support me? Because I was actually in school, and I know he won't really like it. So I just had to chill till I finished. Interesting so name. Shodi Weeks. I like that, yeah, Shodi Weeks. Related to Ricardo? No. No. Or Shodi. Yeah. Shodi, turn up king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the king. Okay. Yeah. Timini, I want us to just, let's talk, let, let's put it on the table. You're not Let's funny. talk Emma. Let's You're talk Emma. Emma is in the building today, and you know, let's talk you know, about the fact that I can sing and I can rap. There's this rap that I, I came up with when I found out that Emma was coming, and I don't know if time will ready, permit. Man. Bars, there's no bars, time, there's no go. time, there's no time. Okay. Spit it. Okay, there's no time, so. What? Yes. You do it on WhatsApp. You're trying to hit on me. Like, nah, yeah. <laughs> none, none, of like, none of that. None of that. None of that. You it perfectly. Like, oh, no time, so I'll just get your number right. Nah, no, no, I'll follow you. Follow me back then. I can DM you. <laughs> KFB. DMs. Wow. wow. Behave now, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but oh yeah, my um, gosh. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like. The topic, for example, what we've been talking about, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of like a big circle, right? So, yes, the music, the business, the passion, the art, all these three things are factors that you need for a mm -hmm. successful career. Mm -hmm. Yay or nay? Absolutely. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. I mean, I think so. I mean, Money for people also. who, I think for, for people who are going into music, um, I think that a lot of people go into music for that thing that you said, right? They're looking for fame. They're looking for that celebrity, yeah. you know, or they have the talent and they maybe not they don't do the hard work, but they just feel like, well, I mean, I can sing now, so someone's gonna, someone's gonna get me. What's yeah. your advice? I know I, I hate asking, but you're the one to ask. If yeah. we're gonna ask anybody, we would ask you. You're trying to go into music. Yeah, man. Have you a, haven't got it all together. Have a picture of who you wanna be on mm -hmm. your way out. Okay. So you always uh, can compare where you're headed. Um, um, also, um, Work hard, mm -hmm. uh, work hard, take care of yourself mentally, um, find peace because mm -hmm. um, there really isn't any happiness in, <laughs> in like fame and like, yeah. like all that. There really isn't any happiness. Most of the people that you see that are super successful are very unhappy, yeah. very super unhappy. And um, Wow, cheerful, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you know, we, need to, uh, we need to also, uh, the business needs to get better because yeah. we can have the biggest artists in the world but have no ownership mm. of what happens and I think that's what we at Chuck to see are really trying to protect and make sure that we we, we don't lose yeah. the, the actual ownership of where the music is yeah. that's what really matters you know yeah. it's not um, it's not who's hot today or who's hot yeah. tomorrow Quickly, um, a lot of a lot of people upcoming up and um, people that w musicians that might be watching they have an issue with pushing out their music you know because they say it's expensive it's is there any trick, tip that you could give, you know? Just start where you are. I, um, that's the first thing we look for. We want someone that has a social media following and a fan base wherever they are. Mm. Um, don't try to take over Nigeria at once. Mm. Start where you are and somebody else will help you. So the, whether it's the media or TV stations or whatever, yeah. it will help you communicate Push. to the rest of the people, but you, you can't beat nowhere. Mm. Mm. All righty. Well, on that note, we do have to go. It's time for us to uh, say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, MI, for coming through. Thank you. We appreciate you. Good seeing you. And I'm looking man. forward to good things in 2017. Yes, hopefully. Fingers bring, push, bring, bring the album, bring the album. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. So you sign our Bye. <laughs>